next step in developing our basic Revit model is to add some type of site plan. And there's a couple different ways that we can do that. Uh, one is using the Mass and Site tab. You'll see a topo surface option here. And there's also property line. There's certain tools available within Revit to develop a site plan uh, that works out pretty well, especially with the topo surface. Um, I, I see that more as a, an advanced application of the software. And so we're actually going to take a different approach. And there's a couple different reasons for that. Uh, primarily uh, because I want to I make sure that you understand how to import uh, uh, an actual AutoCAD drawing uh, from the Insert tab. And so we're going to be looking at using the Import CAD option here. Uh, you can use this not just for a site plan that you've already done in AutoCAD, but you could also have uh, different details or uh, section drawings that you want to bring into a Revit drawing that you've already developed in AutoCAD. And uh, a lot of times you have those just basic stock drawing files that you want to just be able to uh, slide right into Revit into your drawing. So we're going to look at that approach. Uh, to do that though, the first thing we need to do is we need to get a Revit file, I'm sorry, an AutoCAD file uh, of a site that we can use. And so to do that, let's go ahead and jump to Desire to Learn. And when you go into Desire to Learn uh, for week 13, you're looking for the Revit site file. Uh, the file doesn't show necessarily as a specific drawing type here on the screen, but you'll notice that if you hover over it does say that it's a <coughs> excuse me a DWG file and so if you click on that it will download the file or you're able to download the file here and if you hit download um, then it will show up at the bottom of your window uh, if you're using Chrome perhaps you get the box if you're using Explorer either way what we want to do is we want to save that file to our flash drive so that we have it available to import. Once you have your Revit file, uh, Revit site file downloaded from Desire to Learn, we're ready to go ahead and insert it. And to do that, the first thing we want to do is we want to switch to our site plan view. So if you come over to your project browser, and you might need to scroll down a little bit you're looking for the site plan view and when you change to that you'll notice that uh, you should see the roof of your house uh, and you can probably zoom out a little bit because the site's going to be a little bigger than that and at this point now uh, I want to change the scale of this drawing so I'm going to change the scale right down here to one inch equals 30 feet so go ahead and make that change and again might adjust the, the scale or the size of your your roof there but go ahead and zoom back out and we're ready now to go ahead and insert or import that CAD file so remember we go to the insert tab and then we're looking for import CAD so if I click that I'm going to navigate to wherever I saved that Revit site file now you'll notice some options down here at the bottom. Uh, for now, we're going to leave everything as is, as a default. Um, you'll notice the import units are set to auto detect. If you have trouble importing to where you don't feel like the size of the site is matching up with the size of the house, you may need to change this to inch. Uh, usually, the auto detect works just fine. Every now and then, you'll see where it doesn't pick up the units from AutoCAD. Again, default units on AutoCAD are inches. Um, but for now, we'll leave it auto detect and we'll go ahead and click open. So it's going to import that file and we should see in, in a moment here a ghosted image of the site. So there's our site file. Zoom in a little bit. And you can see that as I hover over the lines of it, it, it came in as all one block, similar to what we see in AutoCAD. Uh, that if I click on it, I can now move that, that site around. It's very important to understand, you do not want to move the house. Do not move the house. Uh, leave the house where it's at, 
Instead, you want to move the site to fit the house. And we need to be within uh, this area here, which are actually representing our setback lines. Make sure that the house sits within that area. And then it's up to you whether you want to move it so that the house sits closer to the lake and you have more of a front yard. Or maybe you want to move it up closer to the road, have more of a backyard towards the lake. Or maybe you just want to kind of have it in between. So I'm going to leave it right there for now. Make sure you have the house set where you want it. And once you do, once you feel comfortable with where it's at, now you can move on to the next step. And that next step is this icon right up here, the explode. And we're going to do a full explode. If I click this full explode, you'll see what happens here in a moment. Now, each of these lines show as a separate line. Whereas before they were all one block, using the explode, it allows me to put everything into separate pieces, which is important. Okay. So I've got the, the, the site in there, but right away I, I, I'm noticing, well, the lines aren't showing right. The lines don't show as a property line or as a setback line. And so I want to take some time now and adjust the way that these lines show. And I can do that by jumping to the Manage tab. Under the Manage tab, you should see uh, an area where we can adjust um, under additional settings, we can adjust the line styles. Just in case, I'll give you a little bit of time here because I know that sometimes the ribbons look a little different. Um, and again, it depends on the resolution of the screen, but uh, keep looking around. This icon might be a smaller icon, such as one of these here. You might not even see any text next to it. Uh, so just hover over each one until you see additional settings and then look for line styles. When I open up the line styles window, you'll see a plus next to lines. And if I hit that, this will show me all of the different lines that are currently in the project. And in particular, there's two that we imported in that came as part of that uh, AutoCAD drawing, the property and setback, these two right here. And you'll notice that the line pattern is shown as import, import phantom and import hidden. The phantom and hidden are lines from AutoCAD or line styles from AutoCAD, but they don't show correctly within Revit. So we need to make a little bit of a change. We need to use one of the line styles that Revit has available. So if I click uh, in this box here for property under line pattern, it'll show me the list. And I'm actually looking for double dash. If I just type in D, it'll, it'll automatically jump to the D's in the list. And then I can just scroll down a couple times here until I see double dash. Do not choose one of the ones that has the fractional values next to it. Just choose the plain double dash. And so that will give me the proper line type or line style that I want for my property line. Uh, we're going to leave the line color black and the line projection. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave that at 8 as well. Uh, that's kind of the default there for that, that property line. It's a, a slightly thicker line. You'll notice on this list it goes up to 16. So from 1 to 16. Um, it's medium. We might be able to go a little thicker for a property line. Um, but I'm going to leave it at 8 for now. I also see setback. And that's another one that I want to adjust. So if I click on the import hidden here. I'm looking again under the D's. And this time I want dash just straight dash. So if I click that, that'll give me the line style that I need for setback. And I'm going to give a little bit more thickness to that. I'm going to say maybe a 5 for the setback line. So if I go ahead and hit apply and OK, you can see now that, zoom in a little bit, and you can see a little bit of variation in the line weights. And you can obviously see the line style is different as well. And so the line dash dash is my property line. And then the dash 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 would be the setback line. So everything is all set for that. Now the next step in uh, developing this site plan, uh, we need to begin now to populate the site with different components. Uh, we need to add some trees. We would want to add uh, a driveway and a sidewalk, and perhaps uh, we want to add a, a deck 
on the back of the house. So I'm going to show you uh, first, let's take a look at adding some trees. So we're going to go ahead and go to the Massing and Site tab. Then you'll see that there is a site component. If I go ahead and click that, uh, very similar to what we're used to. Very similar just to clicking on a window, a door, uh, where the properties panel changes. And you can see that there's a list of the, the various trees shown here. Uh, available so perhaps um, I want uh, a red maple I'll go ahead and click that and it'll show me the tree and I'll go ahead and place that up here in the front yard and uh, maybe another one back here now if you think about just uh, from a design standpoint uh, if you have a house on a lake you don't want to fill the backyard with a bunch of trees that would block your view of the lake um, maybe we want some more trees out to the outside uh, but not necessarily in that direct view of the lake itself so um, we'll take a couple other types of trees here and kind of fill them in on the site um, and that, that should be good for now it, you can add a few more trees if you'd like um, just don't go crazy don't fill it up with a bunch of trees uh, it actually will slow your computer down uh, as the, the, the trees have some complex geometry uh, if you do any exterior rendering it'll slow that down as well so be aware of that but uh, you want to avoid unless it's just definitely part of the project that you have to have all those trees um, I would avoid putting too many trees onto the site so uh, the next thing that I'm going to also work on, as I said, is, is maybe a driveway. Um, now there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, under Annotate, you'll see Detail Lines. And Detail Lines give me a few different options. And again, back under Manage, we can adjust the properties of these lines. I could just draft the lines for the driveway and for uh, a sidewalk and then also for uh, the deck. Uh, that's one way to do it, but uh, we know how to make floors and if, if I have a concrete slab as a driveway um, there's no nothing that says I can't use the floor command to add a concrete slab as my driveway. So I'm going to go ahead and do that instead. So I'll jump to the architecture tab and I'm looking for floor. So here's my floor. If I click that um, now the, the default option that comes up typically is pick walls but in this case if I'm drawing a driveway in front of the house I'm not going to have walls to choose so instead I'm going to jump to the line option here if I use line then I can draw my own boundary lines uh, wherever I need them to create that floor so I'll go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit and uh, I'm going to come off of the front of the house here you should see that it, it, it should snap to an intersection of where the wall and that the, the roof would be. So I'll go ahead and come off of that. I'm going to drop it straight down to the property line and then I'll have it flare at a 45 degree angle. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. There's going to be a little bit of editing here involved, but for now I'm just going to get it to where it needs to be for the most part and then I need to close this off as with other boundaries uh, whether for the roof or for a floor um, in the case of inside the house same thing here it needs to be a closed loop we need to make sure it's a closed loop so I'm going to come off the front of the house here for my sidewalk and add that in And then I'm going to need to close it off here. And also then I need to trim up this area here. So to do that, I'll go ahead and fold this one back. And add one more line. To finish that off. And I also need a line right across here. Again, it's got to be a closed loop. So I think if I zoom out here, I can check to make sure that that whole thing is a closed loop. 
I want to make sure that the properties uh, panel shows a concrete slab 4 inch so make sure that you've chosen the concrete slab 4 inch uh, for your floor or for your driveway in this case and if everything is set the level for now we're going to leave it at first floor um, certainly most driveways don't line up with the first floor uh, but for, for the this project for now we're going to leave it at first floor uh, I'll go ahead and click the finish edit mode to complete the driveway and there it is you can see it uh, showing in front of the house you can repeat that same process for a deck in the back I'll go back to floor again use line to draw a boundary line and this time I'm going to go ahead and use a wood finish imagine that my deck is made out of wood and we'll go ahead and create that boundary I'm just going to go ahead and help myself find that intersection and then trim that back everything else is good I'll go ahead and finish that and there's a, a deck for the back of the house and that should pretty much do it for our site plan um, it's one of the more straightforward uh, basic drawings that we have uh, in this class and um, hopefully it won't take you too long to get through it and uh, obviously you can always go back through the video and uh, kind of highlight some of the areas that you think you, you maybe missed a little bit. So good luck.